patho is a beast. Advanced patho is horrifying. And it's usually one of the first classes you encounter in nursing and NP school. Nursing school really knows how to give you a warm welcome. So now that we've established how wonderful patho is, today I wanted to talk about some tips and tricks for surviving this very lovely but very important class that will hopefully make your experience a bit less emotionally taxing. If this is the first time we're meeting, hey there, I'm Liz, I'm a family nurse practitioner and I have by some miracle survived patho in both nursing and NP school. And I've picked up some tips and tricks along the way so I came here today to share them with you. Hopefully you find something useful out of it. Now let's get learning. All right, so first I just wanna take a quick look at why patho is so brutal. That way we can understand it and know how to tackle it. It's good to know your enemy, my friends. Whereas we're heading into battle. That's really what this class feels like. Patho is content heavy. Shocker. <laughs> In case any of you haven't gotten your book yet, this is what it looks like. It's about 4,000 pages and weighs more than my one-year-old daughter. And if your school's like my program, they pretty much just say, okay, go read it. Test is on Tuesday. You're like, okay. That's great, thank you. And you go and run away in the corner and cry. <laughs> oh, such good memories this is bringing back, thanks guys. All right, so why is this class super content heavy? Well, because you're learning about the entire body system, how it can fall apart, and um, you're looking at that on a cellular level. You're also expected to remember everything you ever learned from anatomy and physiology. Yay. So in case that wasn't overwhelming enough, for some reason, schools feel the need to make patho a super duper busy work heavy class. So there's usually a quite a few discussion boards, lots of papers sprinkled in, just a little bit of lemon juice sprinkled on that open wound you have. I don't know why they do this other than to like completely kick you when you're down. I don't know if they use it as a weeder, but whatever, we all know it's challenging. I promise you can do this. Now let's find out how. The very first thing I wanna to stress to you about patho is you need to take this beast one day at a time. Do not go into this looking at your syllabus the first day of class and feel like you need to make a plan for how you're going to like tackle this whole thing because that is going to overwhelm you. You can take a day if you need to, look at the whole syllabus and be like, oh, I'm gonna be so smart at the end of this, but this won't be very fun. You can have that meltdown if you would like. Go and have it. Let me know when you come back. And when you come back, don't look at the big picture. Just take it day by day. Do your best every single day. Get what you can done and you'll be okay. You'll survive. We all made it. There's a lot of nurses and MPs out there, guys. They all survived this class and you will too. And you know what? I want you to just know that no matter what you do, this class might be a little bit overwhelming. It can feel very isolating. It makes you feel dumb when you are absolutely not. And I just want you to repeat to yourself that you are doing great, you can do this, and you are not alone. So I'll give you a personal example of how this class affected my mental health. I so vividly remember, it was my second year of NP school, the fall semester and I was taking patho and a physical assessment and we were sitting in physical assessment and my lab partner is listening to me and she's like, you're having heart palpitations and your pulse is like 120. And I was like, yep, I also have chest pain and I feel like I can't breathe. Well, my friends, that was just anxiety and stress related to patho and Fortunately, after that, I kind of talked with some of my friends. We came up with a game plan and I came up with some of these tips and tricks to lower my blood pressure and my stress just a wee little bit. And I brought them here today for you so that you don't have to get to the point of having a heart attack before you figure out some coping mechanisms on how to survive this class. You're gonna survive it, I promise. Remember, when you're approaching it, do not look at that 3,000 page textbook. Don't look at your entire syllabus and see what you have to know. Just take it one day, one module at a time. We're gonna be fine, we're all gonna get through it, okay? Perfect. Now let's get into this class. First week of class and you are looking at module one and they have assigned you the world's craziest amount of reading. Here's a spoiler for you. You won't be able to read all the reading they are going to give you in patho. So don't even stress about it. Don't set that bar and then you'll feel like a failure. Just acknowledge that right now. I'm not gonna be able to finish all the reading. They know it, I know it. They're evil and assigned it anyways but it's not gonna get to you. You got this. Going into it with the expectation that you won't be able to read it all is going to significantly lower your stress, I promise. But just because you don't can't read anything doesn't mean you can't learn what they want you to learn. Here's how I tackled the reading. If you look at your modules in your syllabus, they should have objectives under them. Go get your notebook, your iPad, your tablet, whatever you are writing on, and on the top of different sheets of paper, pages, whatever you're using, write one objective down. Repeat the process until all your objectives are written down, probably on different sheets of paper. 
plenty of room underneath to take notes. Your objectives are what you need to know. That's what you're gonna be tested on. So that's what we're going to study and read to. Now, you're gonna take a look at the assigned reading list. They probably gave you something out of that gigantic textbook I showed you, and then like 15 or 20 journal articles that they expect you to just casually read in all your free time. Take a brief look at all of this. Look at the titles, go to the journal articles, skim them over real quick. Does the content seem to speak directly to any of the objectives that you just wrote down? If it does, great. Go read it, skim it, gain some facts from it, but don't read the entire thing. You know what I mean? Everything is broken down into headings. So just read the headings that look, you know, go through the reading and just go heading, 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 heading. That's what I mean by skim. You're reading the headings. You're seeing, does this look like something I actually need to know? Or is this like way too detailed and I never need to know it? Or is it totally off topic and kind of like randomly thrown in there and they don't care if you know it? You know, don't waste your time on that. If it's not in the objectives, don't waste your time on it. So there you go. Go skim your book, look at the headings, is the information there? Perfect. Take it, go, write it under the objectives, keep your notes there. If you're reading a journal article, do not read the entire journal article. You will lose your mind. Go to the discussion and the conclusion. Bam. If the information's there, if it doesn't look like it's there, don't even worry about it. Look at the discussion and the conclusion. That's where the meat of the information is going to be. When you're in research or whatever other class, then you can read the actual methods and see if it's a good study. Right now, you don't care if it's a good study. They just obviously gave it to you because they might want you to know something from it. So go skip to the end and get the good stuff and leave. Now that you kind of know how to go and flip through your book and read journal articles, great. Take that information that you've gained from your skimming and your browsing, and when you take notes, take the notes under the objective headings. So you would have an objective heading that said, you know, understand the conduction of the heart. Well, you looked that up in your book and you wrote that under understand the conduction of the heart. And that way, when you're going through your notes later and reading, if you understand an objective, you can you know, put a check mark on it. You can mark it off, dog ear it. Something to say like, I understand this objective, moving on. But there might be one that you really don't understand and you'll need to go back to it. But if your notes are organized by objectives and what they want you to know, you'll be able to measure like, this is what they want me to know. Do I know it? Do I not know it? Okay, moving on or staying put and reviewing it a few more times. Even with doing this browsing method, studying only to the modules and not reading absolutely everything, it is still a ton of reading. So here's what I did. This is not necessarily for everyone, but I'll just tell you what I did because hey, why not? So I split up the reading with my friends and this can only work if you really trust your friends to take notes in a similar style and capacity of, you know, to you, but we were all working full time. So uh, the bar was a little bit lower. We were like, you know what? Even if you don't take perfect notes, you're taking some notes and I'll take them. You know what I mean? That was our mentality. You did what you had to do to survive. So we would split it up. We kind of all agreed. This is how we'd like to study. You take this section, you take this section, you take this topic. And that way we didn't have to read all the books. We just had to read the notified versions based on the objectives, if that makes sense. Obviously that's not for everyone. Some people, if you have to be in control and like you have to take your own notes, perfect, that's fine. You will get it done. It just might take a little bit longer. Obviously a lot of people do that because that's a huge thing of control to have to give up, but it did work out really well for me and it could for you too if you find a group of friends that you know, you really jive with and you trust to take reliable notes. These girls were always smarter than me, so I felt kind of like the dud in the group where I was like bringing up the rear, but it's fine, we all survived. And I guess this is a good time to just say with all of this, like you study however you wanna study. Don't, just cause this worked for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. You know how you study, so go on that. Back to the notes. All right, so helpful thing for this class number two. Now you know how to take notes, read the book, kind of get through all the information. Now. You're sitting there, you're reading through this, you're skimming, you're finding the information, you're feeling like a rock star because you're checking off all of your objectives and you're doing great. And then you come to a grinding halt because all of a sudden the book, you get to that mind space where the book is saying something and even though you've read it 12 times, you are not sure what this clotting cascade is and it's just not sticking in your brain. And that happens to be one of those stupid objectives that they actually wanted you to know. No fear. There is a book called Clinical Pathophysiology Made Ridiculously Simple. And I will link it down in the description box below. I would show you, but we recently moved and I don't know where this poor book went. But this book was a lifesaver. It broke down path, advanced patho into understandable English. So when I encountered something, I was like, I don't really know what those words mean. I could go there and I could read it. And it was like, I think it was like 20 bucks and it was the best 20 bucks I ever spent on this semester because it just made it into something I could actually understand. So I ended up reading a lot of that book rather than the actual textbook. I would kind of read through the chapter in the easy book and see, did it answer the objectives? Sometimes I needed to dig a little bit deeper with my actual patho book or with the journal articles, but for the most part, it'll give you the general gist of patho in a way that you can actually understand it. It has nice diagrams. I can't recommend enough. 
It's down in the description box if you wanna go check it out. But that was how I got over like my speed bumps. You know what I mean? And I'm sure we've all been there. You're gonna hit speed bumps. This is a very technical class and there's a lot of, you know, sciencey words that even the people who are, you know, sciencey people, you can sometimes get tripped up on. Third thing that I used to survive in this class is a podcast. Shocker. You guys, if you've been around a while, you know I love podcasts. I listened to Doc C's Biology 3020, Pathophysiology. It's an older podcast, but you can get it anywhere. You know, you just have to download them all manually because they obviously, it's all been produced. He's not making them anymore. It's a biology professor and it is his lecture. He teaches advanced patho and he recorded it and put it in a podcast. It's very lengthy, I will warn you, but it was such a good lecture. I didn't really get lecture in my patho class. I don't know about you, but this filled that gap for me so perfectly. He goes system by system. It's obviously a patho class, so he talks about everything. It's lengthy, but you know, I made my dog Holly listen to it. I listened to it in the car. I listened to it while I was making dinner. I treated that as my patho class that semester and it saved my butt. He talks in very like relatable terms. He tells a lot of stories. He makes it interesting content to understand. And I just thought he was a really great teacher and I will list what that's called down in the description below. I cannot recommend that enough if you are an auditory learner like me. And you don't have to listen to the whole thing. I listen to the whole thing because I'm crazy, but you could just say, say you're having trouble with immunology or the respiratory system. You could just listen to those and I think it would be really, really helpful. So as I've mentioned, I'm an auditory and a visual learner. If visual is more your thing, go check out some YouTube videos. There's a wealth of knowledge on YouTube where you can literally search a topic and super smart people have gone and put information on the internet because they are a blessing to this world. Anything you really wanna ever learn, honestly, in all of life is on YouTube. I redid a whole bathroom based on YouTube and it has not fallen apart yet. So, back to Pat though. The one, two of the YouTube channels that I super recommend for this are Paul Bolin and Professor Fink. Again, those are just like a lot of online lectures. They're very topical. You can watch those if watching videos is more your thing versus podcasts or do them both. Go for it. Finally, I've talked about it before and I referenced it in my video on how I studied for pharmacology, which I'll link up here and at the end of the video, if you haven't checked it out, I used Picmonic for patho and for farm in NP school. And I used it just for the straight memorization stuff. So when I needed to do, like I mentioned, the ca um, coagulation cascades or what does an IgE antibody versus an IgG or an IgM, anything that required straight memorization, I really liked how they used the, like, the repetitive characters and the stories. It just helped get it stuck in my brain. If you guys, if you think that would be helpful for you, I have a whole video on it, how I used it to study, which I'll link up here as well. And if it, it be Become something that you find helpful. I have a 20% off coupon down in the description below, or you can always try it for free. You get like one quiz a day versus many, but still free. Okay. So now you've gone out, you've collected your information, you've read, you've taken notes, you've watched your YouTube videos, and you've listened to your podcast because you have all the time in the world, right? Right, no, pick a couple. Choose two here, don't do it all. So now that you've done all that, now you just need to study, no big deal, right? <laughs> but honestly, after all the work you went to acquire this information, a lot more is stuck in your brain than you think. Bonus. So the week before the exam, I would just review my notes every day, spend some time doing that, doing some Picmonic quizzes, listening to maybe lectures on YouTube or on the podcast that I'm just like still not quite jiving with. And the most important of all, I found it very, very, helpful to lecture to my good friend, Holly. So obviously if, if you've been around a minute, you know Holly is my dog, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. She's adorable and she's learned a lot throughout the years of nursing. She's gone through two rounds of nursing school. The dog is smart. But I found just speaking patho in my own words, like explaining it in regular everyday vocab to someone else, whether it's your dog or your imaginary friend, was really, really helpful. And it just kind of like helped train it into my brain. So for this class, talking out loud, I found once I pretty much had a grasp of the concept, if I taught it to anyone, perfect. You could teach it to your friend who's also in patho and then they could teach you back something and you might get a different perspective on it. But I think talking out loud is perfect for this class. All right, now let's real quick just address the busy work. This might sound bad, but do not go above and beyond. Just show up, do what you absolutely have to do, and then bounce. There will be other classes that are not so content and heavy and crazy that you can focus on and really shine, make your, you know, people be like, yeah, participation points, you're so smart. Don't worry about it here. Literally show up, do what you need to do, and then leave. If you have to find journal articles or something for this class, which usually you do and they don't want you to one use the ones that they gave you, I used Google Scholar a lot. 
That gave me a lot of good journal articles. And CINAHL is another great resource for nursing articles. Another really good way to get references if you're looking for like a paper or something like that, or look in the references of the papers that they gave you. A lot of the times you can find current ones that have a topic that you're like, ooh, that sounds applicable. So just cheat, and you, it's not really cheating, but it seems like it, where you just use their references to get your own. Awesome. All right, we kind of learned it all there, and I just, the biggest point I want you to remember out of all of this is this too shall pass. Okay, this is a beast. This class is hard and it's probably honestly one of the hardest ones you're going to have. But like I said, there are so many nurses and NPs out there and they all got through this class and you will too. The class is almost always curved. They don't tell you that in the beginning, but people generally don't do amazing in this class. I know you have to get a B and you guys, it'll be okay. If you put the work in, you do the hard work, you reach out to your professor if things are really not going well, you stay organized, keep up with your work and don't leave it all to the end, you will do fine. Like with everything, just play around with this class, see what works. It's gonna take a couple weeks to kind of find your groove, maybe one exam to see like, oh yeah, that study method worked for me, that one did not, and kind of make your own plan, but you should have everything kind of rolling and jiving by like week four. If not, maybe reach out to your professor, talk to your other peers if they're doing well, see what they're doing, maybe it's different from yours, just find something that works for you and stick with it. I hope this helped you and gave you some ideas on how to find information and tackle it when you take pathophysiology. Again, if you're new here, I'm Liz, I'm a family nurse practitioner. I make videos like this once a week and a weekly vlog documenting my journey as a, an FNP. So if you're into that, consider subscribing below and following me over on Instagram where I do random facts about my experiences at work and life. I'd love to have you on my adventure. Now for the question of the day. Going back to our podcast, do you like podcasts? Because I love podcasts. I like listening to the car when I'm doing dishes, what a have you. So what's your favorite podcast that you like listening to? It doesn't have to be educational, just which one do you like listening to that makes you super happy? Right now I'm liking Mortified, which is like reading your diary from when you're like a teenager out loud to an audience, which sounds mortifying, but it's hilarious. So let me know down in the comments what your favorite podcasts are, and I will see you all next time. Bye.